guys, good morning. So I would like to talk about lusters today. I've been asked to cover this topic, so let's just go ahead and do it. So lusters, usually people talk about gold, right? They're thinking white gold, yellow gold. There are many other lusters out there. Um, so usually we use white gold, which is not really white gold, it's platinum, and yellow gold, right? So maybe these teeny tiny vials. And then you have your mother of pearl, which is a really fun um, sheen. It, it's transparent, it's translucent, and it gives like almost like, you know that how like seashells can be really shiny? Like that's what this looks like. When you fire it, it will put that sheen on whatever glaze you have. And then, um, this is not commonly sold, but I buy it from um, a company called the Maryland China Painting Company. So they sell mother of pearl that is tinted with a different color base. So you will have a pink, pink um, iridescent sheen, or you can have a blue iridescent sheen. Um, they have orange, I think, and yellow, and I can't remember if they have green or not, but there are different colors and they're really, really pretty, really fun to use. So these are all the different types of lusters. Now let's talk about why they're so expensive. So how a luster is made. What they actually do is they take the precious metal and they suspend it in acid. And the acid eats away at the metal and creates a suspension of uh, little tiny particles of the metal, whether it be platinum or gold or whatever. Um, I think they also make copper, by the way. Um, and it suspends it in that solution. And then, which I guess makes it a suspension, technically. And so then they take that and they add it to a solution of things that are going to keep it afloat, keep it, um, you know, won't let it sediment, things like that. So then you end up, and I'll go through all the ingredients with you because we'll talk about safety, but um, so you end up with this suspension of gold in other things. So then when you go to fire it, all the other things are going to burn out, leaving you with just gold which is why the yellow and the white gold is usually food safe after firing only, okay? When everything else is fired out, all the bad stuff is fired out, what you're left with is food safe gold. With the mother of pearl to get that sheen, um, that is actually not food safe in the end. So all of these um, iridescent lusters, um, they, you want to put them maybe on the outside, not where the food is touching, because they're not food safe, okay? Don't put it like on the rim where the lip goes and um, but they're still really, really fun on the outside of, of uh, mugs and bowls and stuff. All right, so um, we're talking about firing, so let me just talk to you about how to fire them, and then we'll track back a little bit and talk about how to apply them. So these guys, this is a third firing, meaning that you have a glazed and fired piece that is complete, it's done, it's ready to be used, but now you're putting some gold on it. So what you do is you take that finished glazed piece and you apply the gold and then you're gonna put it in for another third firing, okay? These get fired at really pretty cool um, temperatures, relatively speaking. So usually I fire them at cone um, 018 and 019, not to be confused with cone 18, okay? Which would destroy my kiln, um, but some china paints get fired at like 0 15 so this is right in between so um i, I think 0 18 to 0 20 i've heard is the range for for them um i do 0 18 and 0 19 personally in my kiln um the one thing about firing these guys is you have to make sure that you give your pieces enough space you have to separate them do not crowd your kiln make sure that your shelves are pretty high up because as the solution is getting burnt out to leave you with just the gold, that solution is going to create fumes. And what that can do is it can actually affect um, the piece that's next to it. So it won't, it won't come out shining. It won't come out like with a beautiful gold, you know, sheen to it. So make sure that you space them apart. I actually fire my kiln open because my kiln is outside. So um, when I fire gold, I fire the whole entire time with the lid cracked open. Do not do this if your kiln is indoors. Okay, if it's indoors, please make sure that you're relying on your vent, which will be perfectly fine. You're good to do that. Um, I, I don't actually vent my kiln. I um, use regular air. I'm like really old school, <laughs> but I use regular air to, um, to vent my kiln and um, you know, the way I load it, I create airflow. So um, 
for me, because it's outside, I can let those fumes go out, that's not a problem. So I actually fire open, okay? So that's as far as firing. Now let's go back and talk about, okay, how do you put this stuff on? So you have your glazed piece and you're gonna use a brush and you're going to apply, say, a thin line of it. You have to make sure that you didn't put in too little or too much. If you put in too little and your line looks like it has almost no color, when you fire it, it will come out like a smoky gray. Now, it has been used on purpose. People have done that where they paint on the gold luster and then they take a cotton ball and they like take most of it off. And when they fire it, it looks like smoke. Like you could paint on a campfire, do that, and it looks like your campfire is smoking, you know? So there are some things that you can play around with. But if you want a real gold effect, you want to make sure that your line is nice and solid red or solid green, you know, whatever um, the tint is in your solution. Now, be careful, don't put in too much, because if you put in a line and you see that it's starting to drip, those drips are going to drip more in the kiln, okay? It's, they're gonna run. And then you're gonna end up with uh, some things you have to fix later, and that's not so much fun. So if you see it starting to pool, you have two options. You can take a brush and just try to take off the excess carefully, um, or you can take the whole thing off and redo the, your design in that part of the mug. So to take it off, um, usually we use denatured alcohol. I will tell you that I have used paper towels. You just have to make sure, really make sure, that you get every last bit of it off, okay? Because if any is left behind, you're gonna get that smoky color where you didn't want it, okay? So um, you can absolutely take it off. It's not a big deal. It's actually more forgiving than underglaze or glaze um, as far as like taking off your application and redoing it. Um, it's just expensive because the vials are so expensive that, um, you know, if you keep doing that, you're wasting a lot of gold. But, um, but it, it's easy to do. It's easy to take it off. You know, you just wipe it off, you let it dry, and then you try again. Super easy. Now, you actually can take it off once it's fired too. Gold is a very fine layer. You know, it's sitting right on top of the glaze. It is fused to it. But if you take off the very top of the glaze layer, the gold will come right off with it. Um, so like think about like your grandma's china, right? That has been washed like a gazillion times. The gold is very worn, right? There are pieces of it like, like rubbed off and, and missing. That's why, because it's sitting at the, at the surface and as the elements are rubbing off on it, it's just gonna kind of disappear on you. So they sell things like, um, like glaze, uh, not glaze, um, uh, luster, gold, um, Erasers, that's what they're called. They're called gold erasers. Um, they look like files, they look, they're like this big. And um, I know for a fact that Claking sells them. Um, I'm sure other places do too. And you just file off whatever gold you don't want on your cup. It will take off the top surface of your glaze so it will be less shiny, just so you know. So don't go like really crazy because um, you just wanna get the gold so that it's less noticeable. I like to use um, diamond core tools. They're um, stylus tools with the burrs. Um, so these are really, really like precision, you know, erasers. And I love it. I also use their sandpaper tools. Um, they have these like pads that are sandpapers, but they're not true sandpaper. So they work also really well for larger areas, but um, you know, all sorts of ways. I'm sure you could take like a pocket knife and just carefully, you know, rub off a little bit, um, but be careful, don't cut yourself. So you can fix it before you fire it on and you can fix it after you fire it on. It's a lot easier than with the glaze. So don't be afraid to play with it. There are all these things that, you know, you all these fixes, you know, during application, after application, um, and it's really fun and it really gives you piece a different, you know, very cool new look. Now, the one thing that you have to be careful with lusters is um, their safety. So always, always, always read the MSDS for the product that you use. But um, these lusters, so the problem is uh, they have a lot of ingredients, okay? And I actually, I have a full list of them, but um, it, it's a lot of ingredients and most of them probably will be quite, uh, you know, meaningless to, to most people. But what I want to import onto you is that a lot of them are very um, irritating, right? So they can be irritating to your eyes to your lungs or to your skin. Now, 
that can also mean that they are carcinogenic, okay? Before you freak out, <laughs> you have to think about your exposure. Exposure is measured over time, right? Amount over time. So if you're making golden mugs, that the whole thing is gold, and you're doing it all day, every day, you need to be so, so careful and you need to go like wear the maximum protective equipment you can, you know, the hazmat suit, I don't know, whatever it takes. Um, if you're putting in like gold rims and you're doing it once every three months, you know, your exposure is so much less. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about the carcinogenic effects um, and just mostly focus on the irritating effects, okay? So what does that all mean? The company recommends that you apply these in a, in a well-ventilated area. Um, they have a very strong smell to them. So you will know if your area is not ventilated because you'll walk in like five hours later into your studio and you'll be like hit with the smell. They almost smell like nail polish, like it's that type of smell. Um, my one word of caution is that if you can, try to do it outside. Reason being is because, um, so say you applied a lot of the lusters, right? And you wore a mask. And that's great, okay? So you were protected while you had the mask on. But what happens the next day when you go to do something else, right? To, you go to wedge your clay and you're still exposed to the fumes because the fumes are still in the room. And, um, you know, even well-ventilated rooms, like it will take a while for that to dissipate. Um, so if you can, if your weather is conducive, you know, try to do it outside. Otherwise, make sure that your brushes are washed. You don't wash them in water, you wash them in, um, they sell essence. It's basically oil, you guys, they use oil. Um, so you wash your brush off in the oil so it's not sitting there with luster on it, smelling up the room. You wanna make sure that your bottles are capped as much as possible when you work on it, also so you don't spill it because they're expensive. Um, but make sure that your bottles are capped, make sure that you're not sniffing it, you know, make sure it's not close to your face. Um, do not wipe it off with your fingers off of your piece. It's really tempting because it's like, oh, you know, I got a smudge. Don't use bare skin because it can be irritating to the skin. So the types of things that they have in them, some of them sound so benign that you wouldn't think that they're irritants. You wouldn't think that they're bad for you, but they are. Um, some of them contain eucalyptus extract, rosemary extract. They sound nice, right? Natural, but it all depends on the amount. So, um they are irritants, okay? So be careful with that. They have turpentine, um, they have uh, dichlorobenzene, they have the stoddard solvent. So a lot of these things, um, while they're known for being somewhat of a carcinogen, they're strong irritants. And that's mostly what we're worried about, okay? So my message to you is, do not be afraid of these things, okay? I mean, you also fill up your car with gas every day and that's an irritant, right? And we don't even think about it. But do make sure that you're not wiping it off with your finger, you know, make sure that you have good ventilation in the room. Um, if you can, go do it outside. Um, if it's close to your face, wear a mask because you don't want to be breathing it all in. You know, hopefully, even if your ventilation is not so great um, and you were doing it inside, the next day, all of the fumes are not right in front of your face. They have dissipated and, you know, the, the concentration is a lot less, so it's a lot less irritating. Um, so do all of those things. Don't skip them, you know, don't be me. I'm awful with safety. Like, <laughs> I'm a terrible role model, but don't be me. Um, you know, use, definitely use, um, you know, face mask, if, if especially if you're indoors. Um, do it outside if you can, you know, all the things that I've mentioned. Don't sniff it, don't drink it. You know, it is toxic. It has a lot of bad stuff on it. Um, all that stuff is not such a big deal. It will get burnt right out, but it's not something that you want to like swim in, you know. Um, so that's about it um, as far as, so I, I covered safety with you guys, which is a major thing. Uh, we talked about application, right? We talked about firing um, and what lusters actually are and why they're so, so expensive. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know, let me know in the comments. Um, I do want to do another video next week, hopefully, so if you have any suggestions for topics, um, go ahead and list them in the comments as well, and I'm actually probably gonna keep a list and um, 
just go like down the list every week and make an instructional videos. Um, video, I can't talk today. <laughs> I stayed up, we had a lot of classes last night, so I, I'm like dead tired. Um, but I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Like I said, let me know if there are any questions and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.